Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, so tonight is a uh, public forum for the uh, Millis Middle High uh, School Building Project. Um, first thing I'd like to do is introduce the um, the committee. Um, so my co-chair is uh, Diane Germain. We have uh, uh, Jim McCaffrey. Um, Bob Mullaney is the uh, with the school. He's the superintendent of schools. Uh, Chris next to him is the Chris Blesson is the uh, project architect. Uh, Jeff D'Amico is uh, one of our um, owners, project managers, and next to him is uh, Mike Quinlan and Mike Conroy from the uh, school um, committee is at the end of the table. Um, and also there's, I think, uh, Craig is in the audience somewhere from the select board. So, um, so the brief, I want to start off with a brief summary of the school to why we're here. Um, the school was built around 1960 partially renovated in the 90s. It wasn't a full reno. Um, some of the original equipment um, is here and has all in structure is here and has outlived their expected life cycle. Um, the committee went through the MSBA required multiple options, including baseline renovation and new schools. So we had to do uh, go through a few hoops to even be uh, to, to start the process. Um, the architect presented options in the spring that met the educational plan requirements, but when the cost came back, the committee asked the design team to circle back and see if there were more economical solutions. Um, this committee went as far as getting the cost to do nothing, which would have the town bear the entire cost of the work, as the MSBA would not participate in the options, to what we are uh, to presenting tonight, which is the distillation of all the scenarios running the range of doing nothing to new school. Um, while we understand the cost of any project is of great concern to all residents, we need to weigh the real goal of bringing the school up to a modern learning environment. The choice that we make will dictate how the school functions for the next several decades. Uh, you'll hear many presentations from many speakers tonight explaining all the reasons and thought that was put into these plans. And we'll be having a short question and answer question and answer session at the end, answering any general questions you may have about the project. We'll also be available afterwards to have um, informal questions after the recording is done. So, um, and with that, I'm going to pass it on to Superintendent Elaine. Thank you, Rich, and thank you everyone for coming and looking at the crowd. I see we've uh, some people we've been getting out these nights, so we appreciate um, your interest in all these things school related. Um, just to see if I can get the slides going. Thanks, Chris. Um, so just to kind of uh, remind us of how we got here, um, Millis Public Schools in the town of Millis submitted a statement of interest to the MSBA for a middle school, high school building project back in the spring of 2021. Um, and at that time, there were 56 projects that um, were submitted to the MSBA. So in the spring of 2022, 17 of those projects was, were invited to join the MSBA project. And the Millis Middle High School project was, was one of those 17. And at the time, the, the board of the MSBA said those 17 projects they selected were among the most needy and urgent. So, um, you know, the MSBA recognized uh, urgency and need here in Millis. At the November town meeting in 2022, the town approved a $1.3 million uh, uh, funding for a feasibility study. And that's the phase of the process we're in now. So, um, so what, why now? Like, how did, you know, why does the MSBA 
include us among the most needy and urgent projects in the Commonwealth. Um, we have some significant systems deficiencies. Uh, HVAC does not support learning, uh, particularly when it gets hot out, particularly upstairs in the middle school. Uh, if any of you have middle school students, um, I'm sure you've heard the tales of either in September or in June when we get a hot streak going, uh, it's very difficult uh, up there. It's no picnic on the first floor either, but um, so HVAC is, is really a problem here, uh, does not support uh, teaching and learning. It, just the difference, if you're in this building on an 80 degree day and you go to Clyde Brown, it's like going into um, you know a cool waterfall. Uh, because they have an updated HVAC system. Here, not so much. Uh, our electrical system is obsolete. Uh, we have roof and window leaks. Um, we don't have state of the art security system in this school. We have security measures in place and our students are safe, uh, but certainly not the kind of, of safety features that exist in the Clyde Brown building. Um, we have undersized classrooms. Um, and it limits what we can do in our classes, what our kids can do and what our teachers can do. We have uh, a lack of small uh, space for teachers and, or staff to meet with one or two kids um, and some larger group space where larger groups of kids can meet. Uh, as a result of that, um, you know, we have closets that are converted where uh, some special education and English language services uh, are, are conducted. Um, we have inadequate gym space. Uh, our weight room is undersized uh, and uh, the locker room space. It, it's Halloween and it's probably the scariest place in town. So, um, you know, and we have no space for adaptive phys ed. Um, and as the building is currently situated, we have basically the high school on the first floor, the middle school on the second floor, but we have some high school classes on the second floor. And that can lead to uh, sometimes unsupervised interaction between high school and middle school kids, like in, in a second floor bathroom or something. We, we try our best to make sure that doesn't happen, but there are opportunities for that. Uh, and it's, you know, we don't think it's in the best interest of our students to have uh, mixing like that. So uh, when we were accepted into the MSBA uh, process, the school leadership informed by staff, students, parents, and community members uh, developed an educational plan. And this educational plan, the goal is to reflect the, the core values and educational priorities and how an updated facility uh, could support them. Our education plan describes our vision for promoting collaborative learning, encouraging student agency, providing flexible learning spaces, uh, facilitating cross-disciplinary and um, team interaction, expanding hands-on learning, increasing science, technology, engineering, arts, and math programming, uh, all in a facility that is a comfortable, it's a comfortable environment with adequate lighting, HVAC, and safety uh, features. The education plan supports a vision of two distinct schools, each with their own philosophy and culture, a middle school uh, centered around the, uh, the idea of grade level team, uh, concept with flexible classrooms to support an individual class or uh, you know movable walls or something so you could get two or three classes of the team in there together or, and a high school that would be organized around um, disciplines uh, rather than grade levels and um, with the adequate and appropriate space for hands-on learning um, collaborative learning all that type of learning that is now uh, going on at the college level, and it's it's how we work today in collaborative teams. Our current building really doesn't support that concept uh, that we um, envision in our educational plan. Uh, the educational plan assumes uh, 
more than just a, an upgrade of faulty systems. It, um, it assumes an updated facility that supports teaching and learning in a way that uh, the current facility does not. We're grateful that the MSBA has recognized uh, our need uh, for this project um, and uh, hope the result will be a facility uh, to serve Miller students uh, as we enter the second half, uh, second quarter of the 21st century. So uh, we're really excited about this project. Um, and again, thank you all for coming tonight. Now I'll turn it over to Chris. All right. Uh, thanks, Bob. So um, um, I'm going to walk through quickly. Um, uh, it's been mentioned already about the existing conditions and our team, uh, not only just architects, but all of the uh, engineers uh, for systems, uh, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, e even down to site and um, structure. All of that has been evaluated and supports all of these things that we're talking about, that the building is tired. Um, you can walk around and see that visually with the finishes and things like that. While maintained as best as you possibly can, it still has been um, a long while since um, they've been refreshed in a certain way. And then behind the scenes, behind what you can actually see, there are systems that are um, at the end of their life and actually past the end of their life in the sense that they've been uh, maintained and continue to maintain well, but we don't have, um, you, you aren't sure when something may go wrong that is gonna be a big, big problem. Um, and so that's what these engineering reports say. They're all available to you on uh, the website that will be mentioned at the end of this um, presentation. Um, but I encourage you to go and um, look at those and peruse uh, in depth the sort of uh, challenges that this building faces, not only um, from the educational perspective that's been talked about, but from the uh, systems perspective um, also. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the process, uh, how we've gotten here, what the process is moving forward. Um, the MSBA has a very uh, uh, regimented process for their projects. Um, it comes from many years and many projects of experience. Um, and you're going to hear a lot of what I call alphabet soup of, you know, combinations of letters, et cetera. And I will try to explain those. Uh, but any, if anything comes up, we can ask questions later. Uh, the first the, the first uh, major part of the MSBA system is what's called the feasibility stage. And this is the point where uh, towns start to identify the problems. The, what are the real issues we need to solve? Uh, this is really done through it investigative effort through the building, consultation with the superintendent and the district. Um, and that is, is what they call the preliminary design program. Um, and this is really sort of, again, identifying the problem. Um, we often refer to that as the PDP. So if you hear that uh, mentioned tonight, uh, that was completed in March and submitted to the MSBA. Um, and uh, that involved that educational programming and involved what we call an initial space summary, which is outlining all the spaces required to um, operate the school the way the program should dictate. Um, and then the existing conditions that Chris mentioned, evaluating the, the, the existing building, and then a preliminary evaluation of some um, alternative options to explore. Uh, then we started going into the next phase, which is called the preferred schematic report. Um, this, or otherwise known as the PSR stage. And this is where uh, we start evaluating options. We start looking at what are the options. Um, some towns explore, you know, multiple sites, um, off, off campus, some like uh, Millis look at um, additions and renovations, not just straight new buildings. Uh, and then we're also required by the MSBA to, uh, uh, to review what's called a uh, a base code repair upgrade, which is basically just taking the existing facility and bringing it up to current code. And that's sort of the baseline. That's sort of their, all right, if just to get this building up to current code um, so that we can compare that, it's not when comparing a, a project to zero, we're comparing a project to some investment in the building to keep it operating and to keep it um, safe. Um, and then at the end of the PSR stage, a preferred option is chosen. And that's what we're looking for uh, from 
the town um, in the next couple of uh, weeks and months um, and, and really looking for the feedback from the community to say, you know, here's our opinions, here's what we think about these options so that the uh, school building committee can make informed decision with the input of the community. Um, there was a point when we were actually moving along rather quickly um, and the building committee um, decided really to take a step back and really look at um, a wider range of options. Some of the things we'll talk about later in terms of costs and some of the feedback we've got and let them get to a point where they said, all right, we need to pump the brakes a little bit and really investigate a wider range of options, make sure the community understands that, um, that we're looking at everything uh, with the fiscal responsibility in mind. Um, so um, that's the phase we're in now. It's been a little bit extended. I'll talk a little bit more on the next slide. And then subsequent to uh, the submission of the uh, preferred schematic report, the next stage is uh, schematic design, and that involves really taking that option and doing more design work and answering more of the questions with the town um, such that um, e estimating, cost estimating can be a, more refined. Um, and then after the schematic design report, um, the, the, um, the project goes to the town for funding. And so that would be when the, then the town would vote both at a town meeting and with a ballot vote um, to support the project or not. Um, this probably might be tough to see from way back there, but uh, this is just a graphic outline of, of those phases of the feasibility stage, orange being the uh, PDP, which brought us through uh, April of this year. And then the long blue line in the middle is the PSR stage we're in now. You can see we were originally looking at submission um, this summer, uh, but we've we've uh, slowed the project down by about six months and really done some more investigation, which Chris will outline in his options reviews. And then um, along the bottom are stars, and those are areas where we're looking for community feedback and community forum. And those are fluid. We may add more um, depending on what we hear from the community. Um, just to make sure everybody has the most information before um, they you get to a point where you need to vote on the project. And then the green would be the schematic design report, uh, which is the next phase. And way at the end would be when we're looking at the town funding approval. So this is would be around this time next year uh, that there would be a vote to support the project. All right, so I'm gonna uh, spend the next few minutes and slides walking through the options that we've discovered along the process. And um, this first batch of options are, um, are really, they're the options that were chosen to come out of the first phase, the preliminary design program into PSR. So this is the group that we were studying uh, in that timeline up until um, the previous slide, really that whole blue line in the middle was what we were studying. That's these options. Um, it consisted of the renovation scheme, which is the code upgrade. Um, it, it consists of a new option. And you'll see the note there is that the N1 option or the new options are required um, to be included as part of the option set in PSR, the preliminary um, schematic, preferred schematic report. And um, that's the MSBA's um, standard. So you you wind up going through the whole process and identifying one from each category, a renovation option, uh, a new option, and then an add addition renovation. And then from that set of three, you, you decide your preferred schematic report. Um, so what we were looking at um, here and what we ended up on the final option sets for PSR were the, the base code renovation, which is again, just bringing the building up to code and making sure it complies with today's standards. Um, and then we landed on the addition renovation option being AR4A. And this was the, the in particular nature about this is as Bob was mentioning earlier, we have um, the desire to have two distinct schools on the same campus combined with the big program elements um, that they share in the middle, like the gym and the auditorium and things like that. And um, what AR4A does is that portion that's down in the uh, sort of tan color there, that would be a new part of the building that's intended to be um, in, in the thinking here, it was a middle school. Um, and then 
you could tear down a portion of the building, the oldest wing furthest away and create some new site circulation. But then you have two distinct schools um, that are joined in the middle. That was the addition renovation option. And then you see the new build option there, which would have been on the, um, the field out here and then when you finish it you tear down this building and, and build a new a new building walking a little bit more into those the renovation and code upgrade um the the big the big outcome here is that you end up with um exactly the same building you have now with exactly the same program you have now but with new parts to it so new finishes new hvac um some upgraded things along with that but it doesn't do much for you to solve the educational issues that have that have been brought up before. But it does go um, into some of the length of going into like the the renovation upgrades and code compliance. Um, but again, it's it's a strictly um, strictly the same building that you have now. Um, right. Looking a little bit more into the AR four A option is. Um, Again, we had the addition to the south of the school, which is in the blue. That's a middle school, two-story building. And then you can see the high school um, area that is um, to remain. That's in this this um, pinkish color. And then you can see the areas. I wonder if this will work yet. You can see the um, areas in the middle, which are um, in this scheme proposed to be the auditorium in the cafeteria. This option also assumed a new gym because part of the issues discovered during our feasibility analysis was um, the safety factors related to the gym size, its outdatedness, and its ability to do what it needs um, in terms of the MIA standards, um, which is the um, the governing board for sports in Massachusetts. And then it, it was looking at, um, it contemplates putting the STEM and steam component into the existing gym because it's a big space that's already built. So then we can kind of come in and take that over and put new program into it. So again, middle school down here, high school up here, um, both are two stories and then they're connected by this core in the middle. And, um, and that was really hitting all the marks on the educational program and plan and, um, and the direction that seems like we needed to go. The new option, uh, sorry, this is the site plan for that um, again. It's, it's pretty tidy. Um, I think you can maintain most of the feel of the, the site, but then slightly reorient some of the, um, some of the drop off and pick sequences, which is a helpful thing too, because um, the drop off and pickup is, um, is pretty constrained too. So um, it's about a net neutral um, parking scenario. So not really adding a ton of new spaces um, and and yeah, so that's how this, this scheme responds on the site. Uh, the new option was, uh, again, putting the new building over on the field. Uh, and this would be a tailor-made building um, specific for Millis and your program and how we need to divide middle schools and high school. Um, again, around the shared components in the middle, that's the benefit of doing a middle high school. Um, and then once you do that, you really can reorient almost the entire site by tearing down the existing building, which is up here, building the new field, and then finishing all the parking and really get a good separation of buses and cars and a nice safe site um, that joins ultimately the campus across from Clyde Brown all the way to the new building. Um, so we were at PSR and, uh, and this summer when the committee decided to sort of take a, a slow down and try to find if there were if these were the only um, best options available. And so we started to look at another set of options um, in the last six months. And that's really we started to look at two more addition or two more renovation options and two more um, addition options. And um, and so where we started with that was we looked at, as Richard said earlier, we looked at um, sort of the cost of doing nothing, which is really a 10 year maintenance plan. Um, so all the things that need to happen to the building folded out over 10 years um, and what that's going to look like. And, um, and then we added to that a renovation scheme that basically took the 10 year plan and um, folded that into one project. 
Um, this is a little bit elevated over the base code renovation in terms of how deep we go in chasing systems and chasing ductwork and um, electrical lines and plumbing lines and things like that. And then, um, and then we did another step on top of that, which was the R3 option, which was again, the 10 year plan rolled into one project. And then we added, um, it addresses some science room capacity issues and, um, and uh, safety concerns relative to the science rooms and gym. And so we were looking at these two major safety concerns that the school has and trying to address those in the R3. Um, and then AR5 was building on top of that and saying, what if we then add a steam wing back to the concept and, um, and, and really focus in on the desires of the district through the ed plan and program on steam and STEM learning and um, add a wing off to the side. You'll see that in a second. And then our AR6 was um, looking at the idea in so, instead of building a steam and STEM wing, what if we built a new gym off um, on site that connected to the building and then infilled the gym with steam and STEM. And so it's just the, the box you build is different and they have different impl implications because a big wide open box like a gym, um, our, we were looking at the theory that maybe that's less expensive to build versus um, a steam and STEM building that has more parts and stuff on the inside. So that's the study we were trying to get to between AR5 and six. Um, the 10 year plan went through and identified through all of the reports that we'd showed. I saw, showed that slide up at the beginning and these reports are available on the website. We, we looked through those, we looked at our engineers and we talked with the school's maintenance staff and really determined an order of um, operations here and how they might roll out um, over time. And one of the goals here was to um, see if we could stack these in a way that would prevent a full-on building trigger. So in the code and building, um, when you're doing um, projects, there are thresholds that if you spend a certain amount of money, it requires you to, to do everything within that amount of money. And then there's a timeline associated with that. So we were trying to do the analysis. If we could stack these in a certain way and have them spread out over a certain amount of time, then maybe you wouldn't actually hit that threshold of having to do everything until you get to the very last one, which is the last thing anyway. And so you're kind of pulling it all together um, and taking a big bite at the end, but kind of building up along the way with those and hitting these threshold marks. So, um, so that was the 10 year plan. And um, I think Jeff will go over some of the budget implications and things in a minute, but this was um, th this would have no participation um, from the state. And so, um, this is really, truly the cost of doing nothing. You're still going to have to address most of these systems eventually at some point along the way, along the way. So that was what the committee was looking for at that time. So then we looked at the idea of, um, uh, of the AR5, the AR5 option, which was taking all of these renovations and um, pushing them into a steam and stem option, um, which is this addition uh, down here. And what that's doing for you is addressing both the science rooms and curriculum that you have, some of the deficiencies that um, we have for space, and really trying to push into a 21st century model of science teaching and education um, that includes STEAM and STEM, which is, if you're not familiar with that acronym, it's um, science, technology, engineering, art, and math, and sort of combining, it's the convergence of all of these program materials into one, and this is a purpose-built space to, to achieve that for you. Um, the district is trying to do these things, but it's right now not fostered in this building, and um, from what I understand, actually happens away from the building at times, um, and so um, so it's a real plus and a real big, um, you actually got one of these types of spaces in the Clyde Brown when, when that was built, and so it's furthering that education component into the district. Um, when you look at the site plan here, it does, there's a small parking lot right here um, currently in the school, and this would sit pretty much right on top of that. Um, and then we would look to try to um, create some additional site maneuvering and roadways um, that allows for a separation of cars and buses um, on site, um, but then allows uh, allows some good safe entry points. And so um, I would say on site, this option probably won't change a ton about the, pro about the site, um, but will 
have some modifications and then it will obviously have the steam and stem building there. Um, to visualize that a little bit more, everything in gray is the existing building and then the rendered portion here in red is the steam and stem building. Uh, looking a little closer at the AR6 option, um, again, it's similar. Everything that's in the white components here is similar between AR5 and AR6. Um, the only difference is that in AR6, we just said, again, we were studying what the implications were to build a, a sort of wide open box for the gym and then infill the internal system here, um, internal gym, uh, which is two story height spaces and um, and make that a steam and stem center in the kind of middle of the school. And so, uh, you know, th this is advantageous in some ways because you get a new gym out of it and you still get the steam and stem. Um, and, but, and you also address the science and everything that you're looking for programmatically. It's just a different take on it. Um, this, the one, there is a slight difference between the two AR5 and AR6 in terms of number of spaces. And then like in the middle of AR5, um, here there's this like commons area that allows for um, the spill out and overflow and sort of project breakouts of steam and stem. Um, that doesn't exist in AR6, so it's a bit more of an efficient and tidy layout right there in the middle. Um, and then you have the gym. Um, this is the site plan for that. Um, this plan actually does allow us to get about 20 more parking spots on site um, and then uh, build out this new gym, which um, could have a good um, site connection to uh, the sports fields. Um, looking at that, this option is right here. This is the gym, and then everything else is internal, and largely the school would um, sort of remain um, as is in terms of an adrenone there. I think with that, I'll hand it over uh, to Mike. Go over that. You didn't show our brief. Sure, yeah. Um, so you remember the 10-year plan um, that I mentioned, and then R2 rolled 10-year plan into, um, into one option. Um, the R3 option is, is basically looking at this hallway and this hallway in the existing classrooms. Um, and one of the questions we've been after, and I think Jeff is going to go over this a little bit more in the finance part, but one of the questions that's been a constant with the building committee is, what's the MSBA going to support? <laughs> and and what's their bottom line um, so that we aren't overbuilding, we're right-sizing the project and we're trying to get the best response. And one of the constant, consistent themes is uh, a concern for safety in the classrooms. And primarily that lies in the science rooms um, because you've got you know, some chemicals and things like that that you're dealing with and you need the space in there. And current science standards dictate a certain square footage per student. And so we then backtracked into the building and said, if that's their concern and that's the square footage we need, how does that apply to these rooms? And then we identified a series of rooms that were close and with you know minor adjustments, um, we could probably get the number of students that support the science scheduling and science classroom sizes. And, um, and so AR, or sorry, R3, the renovation R3 scheme is um, basically taking these yellow and green spaces and declaring them as science, but then also trying to address the size so it meets those minimum safety requirements that the MSBA has with an intention of um, that being maybe an attractive project where the MSBA would participate. So, um, so that's R3 and, um, and then AR5 and 6 are these two schemes here. Okay. Um, well, as your owner's project manager, I have the distinct pleasure of t talking about the elephant in the room, which is cost. I know everybody's concerned about that. Um, it's certainly been a part of um, our lexicon for the last few years in the post-COVID inflation days that we're living in. Um, so I wanted to preface that conversation and started off by saying what uh, what we've seen in the construction industry. Um, obviously, inflation, as you know, has affected everyone. Um, prices are up uh, pretty pervasively, and construction uh, is is uh, no different. Uh, basically, over the last four years, uh, there's been about almost 40% increase in um, construction costs, and that has affected the cost of new school construction. 
Um, these costs can can be volatile. They can be there can be short term blips, um, but there's also things like even diesel fuel as um, trucking, et cetera, that impacts trucking, which impacts all of the getting the materials. So even things like that impact construction costs. Um, trades uh, vary. Uh, there was a time when roofing was a real problem. That seems to has, have come back a little bit. Uh, electrical right now is uh, one of the most significant ones, not only for cost, but for um, capacity as uh, the lead times to get the certain equipment has increased exponentially. Um, energy code up updates uh, have also significantly sure. impacted uh, building construction, uh, especially for, for schools. Um, you know, it, it's as energy codes become stricter and stricter and performance goals are, are uh, more and more um, um, of a stretch to get us to a place where we're being energy efficient, that does lead to some increase in the upfront cost of those systems. Now, those do pay off over time in varying degrees due to save utility costs, but um, there's definitely an investment upfront that um, does create a bit of a premium. Um, and then other things that also impact construction costs are labor shortages, um, fuel and transport port costs, supply chain disruptions I mentioned in terms of capacity and lead time issues. All of that has led to um, a very challenging time over the last four years. Um, and I wanted to show you this slide here, which uh, is, is a slide that we get directly from, or at least partially from the MSBA. All of the orange um, squares that you see here are MSBA projects dating back to the far left of the chart uh, in 2010 up to um, the blue uh, empty squares and pluses to the right, which are projects that are in planning. Um, so those are ones in 24 and 25 and projected out all the way to 26 are, are projects that are in the MSBA pipeline. Um, and there's a couple of things I wanted to point out with this. Obviously, there's you can see the big almost hockey stick effect of, of where uh, the cost per square foot for uh, new construction and uh, renovation projects has gone over the last uh, 14 years. Um, um, one of the things I want to point out here is you can see Clyde Brown, where that was, where that fell um, back in 2018 at about $460 a square foot. Um, and, you know, down closer to the, the, the lower end of the range uh, knowing Millis is very cost conscious town, uh, that that project um, really came out uh, nicely. Um, the other thing we wanted to point out is that you know sometimes there's an expense of of projects not proceeding. Um, in Lynn, the Pickering Middle School uh, had a failed vote in uh, 2018, uh, right around the time of uh, Clyde Brown. Um, they are now back in the system, trying to get that project moving forward again now. Um, you know, six years later, um, and you can see the cost per square foot of the original plan project was $509 a square foot. And the current uh, project is estimated to be $732 a square foot. So nearly a 50% increase uh, for a project um, over the course of uh, six years. Um, and so, <clears throat> you know, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the idea is that the, the, the committee really wanted to show the, the community that, um, you know, despite all of this, you can still achieve a project on the lower end of the scale, um, below that sort of median line, um, and be cost conscious and still have a school that um, serves the community well. Uh, so what does this mean for the options? Um, as Chris noted, uh, these were the first three options that came out of, um, of uh, the, the preliminary design program or PDP back in the spring, R1 being the base code repair option. So that's, we, we have it here as a range. I want to make sure you're clear on that. Um, it's a, and it's a wide range. And the reason that is, is because we're still very early in the process. Um, so there's still a lot of decisions to be made that would drive costs one way or the other, say within that range. Um, but this gives you just sort of an idea of uh, what the cost of each of the options would be and a range that, you know, depending on what decisions are made by the town, um, you would fall towards the, the lower end or the higher end of that scale. Um, so the R1 option, just to bring the building up to um, current standards, uh, is approximately uh, 95 to 103 million. Uh, AR4A, which was the addition reno, the first addition reno option, um, you can see is uh, 133 to 147. 
And then N1, which was the new build back in the field, was 150 to 162 million. Um, and you can see like these numbers were scary, right? Uh, they were these are big numbers. Um, and this is part of the reason why the committee chose to take a little time and do a little more investigation. That led to uh, the, the other five options, which uh, the first of which is the 10 year capital plan. So this is really sort of the as we've termed it, the cost of doing nothing. And this would be just to keep the building um, running properly and, and um, in good condition for education. Uh, and projecting that over the 10 year plan that Chris and his team developed with uh, the schools um, is approximately 50 to 59 million uh, in range. Um, and again, and again, that's uh, that's all speculative, right? Like we can't predict where prices will be 10 years from now, but um, they have calmed down, but you know, certainly nobody's predicting another COVID level. Yep. State. So some of the other state funds that they would give us to increase the what we would get just with our so, so we would get fifty right from effectively we would get but we would get forty percent from the state to help us if we do the do nothing if it's yeah. we have just so everyone's right. So um, I, I will, I'll go through the, the options and then we can talk about which of the options um, are likely to be um, MSBA um, or the MSBA is likely to participate in and, and the ones that aren't. Um, R2, which is basically that 10 year capital plan rolled into a single project, uh, doing it all at once um, is uh, 76 to 93 million. Um, R3, which takes that a little bit further and adds some additional science program within the building um, by some of those renovation uh, sketches that uh, Chris had done, uh, approximately 81 million to 100 million. And then the addition renovations, AR5 being the steam addition, uh, 99 to 121. And then AR6, the gym addition, uh, approximately 99 to 120. Um, so the MSBA... Uh, you know, will participate in a certain um, subsection of these options, um, but it's un they will not participate in the 10 year capital plan. Um, it's uh, not, uh, it's highly unlikely they would participate in R2. Um, and it's possible we don't have a definitive answer that they may participate in R3 because of the um, addressing the science program and educational program issue. Um, AR5 and 6, uh, they would participate in. So to, to Rich's point, when you look at these numbers, these are numbers that are project cost um, by themselves. But because of some caps and things like that, the MSB, your actual reimbursement may be a, a, approximately 35 to 40 percent of the, the numbers of the projects they will participate in. So the, the AR5, the AR6 is, you know, let's say it's it, they come in at 100 million then the town's share would likely be about 60 million. Let's start with cost for me. Yep. So, you know, sticking with cost and part of the reason for the range, uh, you know, we're very early on at the overall process. Yeah. We're, we're early on at the process, so we're still at the concept level. And so as you, you start to go through the process, we know cost is paramount in town. We want to make sure we're good stewards of the town's money. And so all these options come with different value propositions, right? With each of the options you go up, the price goes up, but you get more, right? And so what the building committee, the reason they slowed the process down is really to understand that. What is the value that you're getting for your dollar? How does it relate to the MSBA? How long do I get out of that investment, right? So certainly lowest cost with the renovations, you know, it feels good right out of the gate, but you may be back here in 20 and 30 years, where if you go towards the higher end of the scale, you have a 50 plus year building. Right. So there's values and trade offs that are there. The other reason for the range here amongst the individual options are that there's many decisions ahead. We're still at the initial of what do we want to build part of the stage, not what does it look like? The building committee will have many conversations about what are the finishes in the building? What type of mechanical systems are in the building? Is it green thinking? Are we going for geothermal, you know, which is not a conversation your town is necessarily having, but many other towns have. So sustainability goals as a whole 
can be a driver, right? And what are the mechanical systems that you're going in there? These are all conversations we're, we've initiated with the building committee and we'll continue to have. And those are the conversations that happen between now and that schematic design, which is about a year from now, when you would wrap up the total value of the project and then send it back to the taxpayers for the overall vote. So there's a lot of work that happens beyond today. And that's why it was prudent to put a range in there because uh, the building committee and the school department are in the driver's seat about understanding what value they get per stage and then moving the pendulum of what are the finishes. You know, you can always pick uh, less expensive finishes, but they don't last as long, right? And so it's important to be good stewards of your money. And I do want to explain that's why there's a ladder here and why there's a range at each step of the ladder on the rungs. I'm going to talk a little bit. Do you have some more? Okay. So on that, uh, jumping off that, we talk about the criteria. So in order to evaluate the options, you have to think about the components that you're doing, right? There are many things that drive the overall cost of the project. These are 12 uh, tried, tried and true metrics that we use in other towns, but they're also project specific to your town. First and foremost, the educational program. At each of these stages, you're getting a different value proposition, right? So you need to understand in the building committee and school department you need to understand what you're getting for the renovation two, renovation three, or the ad renovations eight, uh, four, five, or six. Uh, the cost, uh, we have costs for all the slides, uh, which you just saw. Schedule duration, right? Uh, the renovations will take longer, right? You've got to move around them. You can make them go shorter by bringing on temporary modulars. The temporary modulars are throwaway costs. So those would be trailers like they used to be parked out behind Clyde Brown. Right, you can get through the process quicker, but the MSBA won't reimburse and you end up returning those trailers at the end of the job. Uh, disruption to education, that's very important in a renovation project, more so than a new construction because you're really in and around the building hearing the noise and vibrations. Um, less so on all these solutions that are out there with the exception of the one new construction, but disruption to athletic fields. Uh, sustainability, uh, as I mentioned, some other towns are having more broad conversations about being fossil fuel free and things like that, that can be real drivers. That's not where this building committee has taken the conversation because they're trying to be good stewards and still being green. And there's a balance there. Um, you don't need to be at the bleeding edge of, uh, of sustainability as some other towns are trying to push. Uh, swing space, as I noted, uh, on-site percolation, uh, parking and circulation, as Chris alluded to, and then permanent complexities. So those are, these are some of the criteria that the building use building committee used in their rubrics to in order to evaluate them. And so what that rubrics looks like is a traffic light. And now a standard one of these, one you may have seen Clyde Brown in the past, you're looking at more all ad renos or all new constructions that are very comparable. So the nuances are a little different. Here, you're looking at the full range of options from a 10 year capital plan that is the, the, the cost of doing nothing in code renovations up to the new construction, which is the image all the way on the right. And in the middle is all these ad renos and renovation options. And so the gradation is more nuanced, right? So just because you see more oranges and yellows in this, on this particular chart doesn't mean they're good, not good options for the town of Millis. They're just relative to the other options that are on the board. So normally when we look at this, we always say green means go. But in your case, you're looking at a, a wide variety. So yellows and oranges also have values. It goes back to that, that value proposition. And so this is the work that the building committee is going to be doing over the next few months to really articulate and understand what you get for each of the options that Chris has presented tonight. Before I open up to questions and, and Rich for closing, I just wanna say next steps. So we're engaging the public tonight in a series of community forums. Uh, this one's in person. Our next one in the middle of uh, November will be uh, virtual to try and pick up another demographic of people. And then we're having another one at the beginning of December, right? We're looking for the feedback of, the, of you, the public, in each of those forums so that the building committee can understand that and help them analyze the value propositions. If all stays on track, uh, they may be in a position to recommend the preferred option uh, towards the middle of December and then move forward to the MSBA. As Mike showed you earlier on the timeline slide, that would then put you in that schematic level design. We'll really do the detailed design over the next six months, then re-engage again with the community and, and the various boards in town to show you the final package before we then submit it at the end of the summer, uh, then coming back for a town meeting uh, in the fall of, of 2025. And then, uh, you know, with that, it's really stay informed. Uh, and so there's a project website that's up there. Uh, we're going to continue to populate that uh, with updates, uh, including tonight's forum presentation. There's a project email that goes to us in the group here. So if you have questions, please don't wait for the community forums, submit them. And you can always reach out to the school building committee uh, through the town's website or through the school department.